Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor, and I'd like to uh, take the opportunity to show you how I set up my A6500 Alpha camera. Okay, so uh, first thing I would uh, invite you to do is to um, select um, a shooting mode other than auto, otherwise you'll find a lot of these settings I'm referring to will be greyed out. Next thing we should need to do is just come into the menus. Okay, so let's uh, make a start, not in the uh, typical tab one, we're going to come to this uh, suitcase uh, setup menu here. And uh, we could start over at number one. Uh, typically, I will raise the monitor brightness. Um, I will come in to this setting, click uh, brightness setup, and uh, I will then choose manual and then increase from the standard to plus one or plus two. In exceptionally sunny weather, I will actually come into this and set up for sunny weather. Now it will lead to a bit of a drain on your battery, so you will need to switch this off when you no longer need it. Okay, so let's uh, return back to the menus uh, and show you some of the other settings that I would invite you to change. Uh, power save start time, I do increase that to five minutes. I hate my camera going to sleep because I've been chatting to somebody for a minute that I'm about to photograph. Uh, if you're a 4K shooter and you wanna maximize your shooting uh, duration, you might want to also set that auto power off temperature to high. Uh, NTSC PAL, this is an important one. Um, you need to select the correct region, otherwise you could end up with flickering movies when you're using artificial lights. So do set that up uh, to the uh, select uh, region. Now you will need to Google um, your appropriate settings. I'm in Australia, so I've set mine up to PAL. On the same panel, uh, I have select the touch operation to touch panel only. I don't need to be using the uh, the touch panel to focus when the, uh, I'm using the finder or the EVF okay in order to find focus and I'll set the touchpad area to whole screen. Okay coming along um, we basically don't need to make any adjustments there. Um, date time setup, I'm not going to show you how to do this but I would encourage you to select the correct date and time the area, and also enter in your copyright info. All of this information works its way to the files, and uh, basically all of your files will carry this correct information. This is basically um, the format. Just remember where this is. This is where you want to format the card. Every time you put the card back in the camera, you do want to format that. Go up and across to one, and start. As you can see, I'm a raw shooter. Uh, I don't change the aspect ratio, but I do switch the noise reduction off because I will do that in post. And if you're doing the noise reduction in camera and you've done a 30 second exposure, you will wait 30 seconds while the camera removes the noise. Okay, color space, I'm a raw shooter, so it doesn't make a difference whether I'm shooting in sRGB or Adobe RGB, and that is the same for movies as well. It doesn't make a difference. You can uh, correct uh, your lens compensations in camera. Uh, you probably don't want to correct shading uh, in camera and in post, otherwise the corners of your images will be a little bit lighter. So let's just go back to the menus, coming along. Uh, bracket settings, I will typically set up with a two second timer delay on my bracket so my uh, hand will be off the camera when it starts shooting the bracket burst. So that's coming along quickly. You'll return to the memories uh, once you've got a group of settings that are perfect for movie shooting or wildlife action, you're gonna commit those to a memory so you don't have to remember all of the group of settings every time. And I've created separate movies uh, for that process of creating uh, groups of settings for particular genres of image making. All of these we can uh, basically um, override um, when we're shooting in the camera without coming into the menus. So uh, one of the ones down here that's a bit greyed out because of my current settings is that center lock on AF. And now we will be setting that up in the function menu. So we'll refer it again to this later. So auto focus with shutter. If you're a back button AF user, you will be disabling this so you can separate the shutter release from the uh, task of focusing as well. Pre-AF needs to be off, otherwise you will be draining your battery. If the camera is uh, around your neck and uh, it senses uh, something close to the EVF, uh, you'll be constantly focusing the camera even when you're not taking images. 
Okay, moving forward, again we can access all of this um, from the hard settings and the function menu. We will be assigning ISO auto minimum shutter speed uh, to the function menu because it's incredibly useful if you're shooting fast action and you want to freeze that action but you're in aperture priority, not shutter priority. AEL with shutter. This is again for action shooters, a whole burst of images. If that AL with shutter is switched on, all of the images will be locked into the exposure of the first frame. If you switch it off, it will allow the auto exposure to vary if your subject moves from shadows to highlights or vice versa. I'm going to leave that in auto and let the camera decide. Um, but if, that's, if you're fussy about that, then override that. Flash, I won't deal with that in this movie. Uh, white balance, you'll want to sign that uh, to either the function menu or a custom button. D range optimizer, dynamic range optimizer that is, doesn't have an effect on raw files but will affect the viewfinder which may be of interest to you. Same with the creative style, good for JPEG shooters but doesn't affect the raw. Picture profile, I will typically use uh, um, PP6 if the contrast of my scene is very high. This will just uh, prevent me from clipping the highlights of my subject. Okay, so let's just uh, switch that back to off and go back into my menus. Coming forward and again, peaking level, uh, I've set that to mid. We could uh, choose a different color that's more uh, noticeable. Um, than white. It's given that I'm photographing a white subject, so I'll set that to red. Okay, so that's moving forward. I don't use uh, MF Assist. That would be if I twisted the focus dial, it would zoom in. I use the uh, focus magnifier, and I'll be setting up a custom button uh, for that. And this one is at the top there, uh, currently grayed out. Face registration. Um, this is where you can register an important face, so rather than the camera just choosing a face, uh, it will go to the face that you've registered. And again, smile face detect, um, you can have that on or off. I'll typically leave that on, but uh, make sure that I've got it entered into the function menu so I can switch it off at a moment's notice. Okay, so moving forward onto the second tab, these are your movie recordings, file format, I will choose XAVC SHD. You need to use the SDXC cards uh, to get the uh, maximum shoot time on this format. And this um, format is much better than the older AVC HD format. Now, uh, again, I'll uh, make sure that's selected, drop down one, and I'll be shooting at 25 frames per second with 50M as the compression. This is the highest quality moving shooting. If you're an NTSC user, you'll be given the choice of 24 frames per second or 30. And again, the differences there are uh, to avoid you getting flicker in your movies. And there are your 100 frames per second uh, frame rates. Again, that will differ for NTSC, but this is for shooting slow motion movies. Let's just uh, come back into the menus. S and Q is typically actually where I set up that uh, higher frame rate so that I can leave my standard uh, um, uh, frame per second as the 25. Okay, so that will pay back four times slower. Drive speed, I've set to slow. This is when I tap between two different subjects using the, uh, the, uh, the monitor. It will uh, pull focus quite slowly. You've obviously got three choices of speed there. Okay, we've got track sensitivity is set to standard. You can set that to responsive. And so if the camera doesn't feel that it's got focus on the subject anymore, it'll jump to the next, next best subject. And basically, if that's inappropriate, leave it at standard. We've got some audio recordings. We won't cover that in this uh, general overview movie. Marker displays for making sure your content is within a safe area of the movie. Um, uh, silent shooting is in the off by default. Uh, you only want to switch that on when you have to use it. Um, if you're shooting in artificial lights, such as fluorescent lights, you can get some strange banding occurring. If you are using silent shooting because you, you don't, can't afford to make a noise with a camera, take a test shot and just to see whether the banding is apparent or not. So E front curtain shutter is on by default. Steady shot is on by default. It becomes uh, off 
when I'm shooting with um, on a tripod, especially with telephoto lenses, or I'm shooting erratic subjects and I'm panning the camera, um, if I can't switch the steady shot off on the lens, I will switch it off on the camera. And I will again assign that to the function menu. Steady shot can be used with non-native lenses and that's what that menu item is for when using um, a lens adapters. Okay, uh, these are all grayed out because I'm not in movie mode or JPEG mode. Uh, display button, this is where I can decide how much information that I see on the back of the screen or EVF. And I'll typically have level and histogram uh, active so I can see uh, that important information as I'm shooting. Okay, if you do make any changes, make sure you hit the enter button before coming out of this menu. Okay, so back to the menus. Okay, Zebras, an early warning uh, system for movie shooters to make sure they don't clip the highlights. Grid lines to make sure uh, everything is straight while shooting. Okay, so moving forward, oh, let's just go back one actually. Uh, we've got a, a find a frame rate of 50 frames per second. If you're shooting a movie shooter, you might want to raise that to 100, um, but you will um, be prevented from raising the brightness of the um, LCD if you're with that higher frame rate. Okay, so there is a little bit of a choice there. Okay, brighter monitor or a higher frame rate. Okay, that's coming back to um, the uh, menus forward live view display is on by default the only time you typically want to switch that off is when you're in a studio uh, off camera flash and you don't want to be previewing the dark studio you uh, basically want uh, the uh, finder and the um, the lcd panel the monitor to show a bright um, uh, view so you can focus on your subject Auto review is off by default because you don't want to see uh, a little image pop up in the finder window every time you shoot one. That would completely annoy uh, sports shooters. Custom key shootings, this is really where we're coming into some uh, interesting custom settings. And I'll just show you my settings here. I've got exposure compensation on C1 on the top of the camera. It is there on the bottom of the camera by default, but I like um, a quicker access closer to my finger that's on the shutter release. Uh, focus magnifier on C2 when I need to zoom in to check focus in manual focus. Uh, find a monitor select. Okay, so if, I, if the camera is close to the body and the monitor switches off, I can just press the C3 key and it will come back on. Okay, so that's incredibly useful. Uh, focus standard. Okay, so focus standard basically um, allows me uh, uh, to uh, move the focus point just by pressing the center button. Okay, moving the focus point around the screen and then I've basically quickly moved the focus point. Okay, I can also tap the screen as well. Okay, to change the focus point. Now that's on um, um, center lock on. So I'll need to override that or I can just press the center button to override that. Okay, let's just come back into the menus just to show you my custom key settings. Okay, so um, drive mode uh, and ISO are the defaults as is exposure compensation on the down button. I've changed the AEL button down here um, to IAF. Okay, so uh, that's again because it's closer to the top of the camera rather than the center button which I've now reprogrammed as my focus standard. So the only ones left are the AFMF. Okay, on AFMF I prefer to toggle between manual focus and autofocus rather than having to hold that button down. And if you do have a focus hold button on your lens, you can override the autofocus or you could reprogram that to something like IAF. So let's come down to the function menus. Uh, quite quickly, I'm just gonna show you now that we have a, an upper six and a lower six. And I've over um, ruled uh, a lot of the defaults here because they're surplus to requirement because we can access and change those settings using hard dials. So let's just go into the function menu and run you through them. There's the center lock on AF. I typically use this with movies. And uh, basically what will happen is I can uh, basically tap the screen and it will try and find a subject and then follow that around the screen. Uh, if uh, I want to basically move back to a, um, a spot focus, 
now I can just tap the screen and move that focus point with that center lock on off. Okay, so let's come back. Um, there's where I choose between continuous um, for action sport, basically anything that's moving, and single for still life, landscape, etc. Okay, let's go back to continuous and again back into the function menu. Uh, just uh, uh, probably I, I should just point out that if we do uh, want to just center um, that focus point, I can hit the C3 key, which centers that focus point. Okay, so let's go back into my function menus and there we've got my focus area. Uh, when I'm in continuous, uh, we get some extra options, which are the lock on AF. And I'll typically cycle between lock on AF wide where the camera will try and find the subject and expand flexible spot where I get to choose where the camera will start tracking the subject. Come back into the function menus, ISO auto minimum shutter speed. This is where I can choose my preferred minimum shutter speed that we've talked about. And uh, if I go back to the function menu, this is uh, replicating what is on the right side of the dial. But as ISO auto minimum shutter speed doesn't kick in until we're in ISO auto, I like that visual reminder. And if I press the center button here, I can uh, come out of auto ISO if I'm shooting landscapes or occasionally when I'm trying to balance uh, ambient light with flashlight when using flash. Okay, so let's just come across there where I can access silent shooting. This is where I can switch um, smile, face detect on and off. Now, uh, one of the things you probably know, need to know about um, face detection, it'll pick the face that's uh, closest to the, um, uh, the, the variable spot. Okay, so that is useful for moving the spot to choose which face the camera will prioritize if you haven't registered a face. There's my steady shot on and off, quickly accessible. I don't have to remember where it is in the menus. Uh, there's my auto white balance if I want to come out into a manual white balance. There's my picture profiles where I can access my PP6 when shooting in sunlight. Here's my focus peaking and uh, I'll just show you that focus peaking. Let's just move that out. We'll just go into manual focus and you can quite quickly see the edges of the subject, not focus, focus. Okay, so let's just come out and you can quite quickly see. This one is grayed out. This is the shoot mode dial, but this is useful leaving that there because when we're in movie mode, and I'll just switch to movie mode here, and I want to change the, um, the shooting priority. That's a panorama, that's not movie. Okay, so if I want to now come into the function menu, you can see I can switch from shutter priority, where typically I'm shooting movies at a 50th of a second, but if I wanted to switch to manual, obviously I can't use the shoot mode dial, so I do it here. So now we can come into and change the shoot mode. So there's all of the function menus that I've set up. Uh, back into the main menus, we'll just cycle along now and uh, come over to the wireless settings. This is where you can connect to a home network. Um, this is um, where you can uh, switch Bluetooth on and then pair your smartphone. Okay, very useful. Uh, because what you would then want to do is uh, link um, your information from your smartphone, your GPS data, time, and uh, place on the planet uh, and have that um, uh, sent to the image files you're capturing. Okay, so exceptionally useful. Uh, application list. I do use a couple of applications. The ones that uh, favor the raw shooters, smooth reflection, which is an alternative to ND filters, my Sky HDR, which is an alternative to graduated filters, and this is if I've forgotten my intervalometer, the time-lapse app. Let's go back cycle across, no options to change in playback mode, and um, now we're back to where we started. Okay, so hopefully you found that quick overview of how I set up my A6500 useful. Just remember to subscribe to my channel and check out all of the other movies that uh, I will be posting. Okay, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Global Imaging Ambassador, and I'll catch you online next time.